our happy Good Friday to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your schedule to uh, join us. Uh, we're going to have a good conversation today on anxiety, which really isn't affecting anybody right now. We're all doing really well, so <laughs> I'm glad you're uh, a part of this. Um, I'm really excited for uh, Rob to be with us um, and uh, sharing his heart. I know he's excited to um, be with you here today as well. Um, so be thinking uh, as we get into the conversation, everybody, um, about any uh, questions that you might have or thoughts. We, we're going to have a bunch of resources that uh, we're going to be putting up uh, in our chat box. So if you want to go ahead, um, uh, a lot of you are Zoom pros. If you want to mute yourself, and then once we get into uh, some of the Q&A and some of the comments, we'll have you just raise your hand. Uh, Joe is doing the physical muting, uh, which is a gift from God right there. Um, <laughs> and then um, we will also, if you go down to your uh, participant button there and click on that, you can see who's in and you can also get our attention that way by raising your hand through that and hit the chat button and they both will load up on your right side there and you can uh, feel free to um, put in any of your questions or your thoughts there. Uh, we're gonna get to it uh, in a little bit. We're gonna have Rob share um, his, uh, his heart here with you on anxiety and how to manage it in this time. And then uh, we'll um, have a little break here and then we'll get into some more questions and uh, Q and A, but uh, so glad you're here. Y'all doing good, give me a wave. Yeah, this is an awesome Double group. I'm, I'm loving to see everybody that's here. Got yeah, it's a good group. Yeah, good group. really good. Fantastic. So, and Pastor Steve out there in Pennsylvania. Tess, you are you are a faithful Zoomer. You are always on when we're doing things, and you, you should get the the award. I know your pastor's over there, um, but uh, she 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 rocks the Zoom meeting. So I appreciate uh, her being here. We got Beth Horner and Pastor Brian out there, and Jasmine. Good to see you. Who else is on? With Jasmine there. Um, Hi, good to see you guys too. <laughs> we just we don't have your video. Is that on purpose? Yes, it's on purpose. I'm not <laughs> video ready. <laughs> She's from the Bronx. Uh, they do they do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, we're glad we're glad you're here, Wayne and Pastor Bro Roger and Phil. Yes, sir. You just saying hi? Just saying hi. Okay. Well, we're uh, just saying hi. Okay, hey Wayne. And Bob Santos with his crazy hat. You always got a hat on, Bob. So do I. But I have a reason why I have a hat on. <laughs> you don't. Then I need so, a hat. Uh, we're going to just go. What's that? Yeah. Then I need a hat. It just, I, with the glare coming off my natural lighting here, it just, I'd be like Shekinah glory, and I don't want to be a distraction to you all. So once again, thanks everybody for joining us again. Happy Good Friday. Um, it's a great weekend. Um, we're going to have church services all over Facebook this weekend. It's going to be flooded uh, with the gospel and, and things like that. So that's exciting. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rob Horner. He's a professional counselor, Christian counselor, a good friend. He's connected here with our Elam family. Some of you know him uh, really well, and I'm just excited to have him here with us. I want to say hi to our Facebook viewers. We're on Facebook Live right now. So all of you, um, your, your faces are out there uh, in Facebook Live, so show me your best stuff uh, with the folks out there, but we want to say hi to them, and if you have any questions, go ahead and, and type them in the comments, and uh, uh, Joe will get them over to us, and Debbie, um, I want to say a shout out to Luke, Luke's our uh, administrator here, he's going to be putting up some stuff um, to follow along with Rob's outlines to keep you all uh, just flowing with it, so Dr. Rob, I'll turn it over to you. So glad to have you. Thank you for joining us in your busy schedule. Take it away. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it is good to be here. And now I'm a little intimidated with all these Zoom experts because uh, I'm, I'm literally just feeling out this technology. Uh, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling over the last two weeks, as you can imagine. But uh, this is the first time, you know, with this large of a group. So uh, I just appreciate being able to get together with my Elon brothers and sisters, you know, since uh, we're not going to be together too soon, um, but I just wanna really just kind of lay a foundation for anxiety, uh, both from a biblical, but also uh, maybe from a psychological perspective. And even if you yourself don't suffer from, from anxiety, you're, you're now in a position to help a lot of people who are. 
and sometimes the the platitudes that we've heard in the past uh, just don't sink in deep enough to give us a real sense of peace because these are different times. So just starting with some of the basics, uh, according to uh, the APA, their definition of anxiety the, is that it's a normal reaction to stress that can be beneficial in some situations. Think of, think of this as an alert system that God has given us that, that keeps, us, uh, keeps us ready for action ready for defense, ready to move. Uh, so that feeling of anxiety can promote uh, activity and safety. That's when it's constructive. Uh, unfortunately, it becomes more destructive when it can just overwhelm our sensibilities. It overwhelms our ability to think. Uh, we can't sleep. We can't function well. Um, so it's a, it's a real deal. It's not something that is a product of not being faithful enough or not being strong enough. Uh, it can overcome the best of us. It, it actually is the number one uh, mental health issue in the country. And it's the leading mental health issue for women. Whereas for men, it's number two, uh, only uh, being uh, more so with men, depression is more prominent with men. Uh, probably the last thing to know, uh, you don't have to do a wave here, but I'm one of these, one of three people who have actually experienced a panic attack in their lifetime. And if you haven't experienced one, uh, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. And if you have it, you probably have ministered or are ministering to someone who's experienced that level of anxiety, which is temporarily debilitating and, and actually quite scary. So it's good to be equipped if we're going to be talking to folks. Uh, one, of, one of the questions I get from folks is, is what's the difference between fear and anxiety? And the best way I can describe it uh, in layman terms for me to understand it, uh, fear is more thought-based. When I'm thinking fearful thoughts, it literally generates chemical reactions in my brain. Those reactions are God-given, um, that we're designed to react to those fearful thoughts. They cause, the, the chemical reactions then cause a feeling which we refer to as anxiety. So think of the fear is is it's encapsulated by how I'm thinking. Anxiety is, is the determination of how I feel. So you can see where these two are interrelated because if I'm in, if I'm in an environment which is legitimately scary, it's going to then stimulate my thoughts. And as my thinking is negative, it then generates my anxiety. So as, as you can see, it becomes, it's called the panic cycle. And it, it can become a, a real uh, debilitating situation for a lot of people. One of the things I want to share with you guys uh, before we go to our first break, why are some people more anxious than others? Any of you guys come from a family of anxious people? You know, we, we don't, being a, a Christian psychologist, you know, we like to blame mom and dad for everything. That's where we start. <laughs> but the truth is there's, there's some genetic predisposition to this tendency to be anxious, you know, to have these disruptive feelings that hit us. So it may not even be mom and dad, but if we look at our family history, it, it's often we can see that there's a tendency. So we just got to deal with it differently. The, the goal is not to eliminate anxiety. You know, you can self-medicate to the point where you don't feel anything, but the goal is, is to manage your anxiety so that it's productive and inspiring but it doesn't force us to kind of lay down. Uh, the second thing, as you can see by your screen, hopefully, uh, childhood trauma has a tremendous effect on anxiety levels. Our limbic system retains every activity and every emotion associated with that activity that we've experienced. And it hangs on to those feelings and experiences in order to protect us. The problem is if it's been traumatic, and the brain hasn't processed it properly, we can live in an anxious state. And as soon as anything feels like or, or, or senses are stimulated that are similar to that trauma, it can cause us to be anxious. And there's a lot of folks that are experiencing that right now. You know, times from childhood when they were, they were hungry, they didn't have enough. They weren't sure if, if there was gonna be enough money in the bank. Um, all those kind of things what I find people are getting stirred up just because of present uh, activities. 
dysfunctional sympathetic and parasympathetic system. I don't, I don't want to get too technical on this, but the bottom line is God gave us a nervous system that helps us to rise up to the occasion. And he also gives us a a parasympathetic nervous system that operates to bring us back down. And if either one of those are not operating properly from chemical transferences, we're not going to experience peace. Um, Last thing and probably most important from a spiritual perspective, I, I just encounter a lot of Christians who either don't know God's word and enough to know where to go to receive his peace, or they just don't understand how to apply it to their situation. So this is where, you know, in Elam community and leaders, we can really support people. We can bring a truth to a situation that can really bring peace to their thinking. And I threw the last one here because a lot of people don't think about it, but what affects our anxiety levels probably more than anything else is inconsistent sleep patterns. Amen. If we're, if our brain literally processes at night during REM sleep, it processes everything we've encountered during the day. And if we don't get enough sleep in order for the brain to, to heal itself overnight, which is generally what it does, uh, you wake up the next day with the same level of stress you had the day before. Right. Yeah, that's, so that's those, good. Oh, yeah. those are just some basics to get started with the discussion with. Yeah, that, that's some great stuff. Um, I have a, my oldest son, uh, he struggles with anxiety. Um, and when we've been doing all the testing and I'm wondering uh, where some of this is from, a lot of it um, is that he has uh, sleep apnea and uh, he has very mm-hmm. bad sleep. Um, so he's on a CPAP machine, which he fights because that gives him anxiety. So it's kind of a crazy um, uh, cycle that he's in. Um, when we were doing the sleep study test, um, they found out that I needed <laughs> a CPAP machine too. So I, I've been on yeah. it and I've had some great sleep and it's, it's really helped with my anxiety. As a Good. kid, I, I struggled with anxiety, didn't even know it. Um, and so it's just, uh, so that leads me to a question. Uh, anxiety is normal then, right? It's a, a part of everyday life. Uh, maybe normal is not the w- right word, but would you say anxiety is kind of, uh, a, a part of our life out there that we just have to learn not to get rid of it, like you said, but to manage it. Yeah. What I encourage people to do is, is, is begin to, to get a better, um, a better recognition of what your, what your number is. I call it, I ask a lot of my clients, so what's your number today? And what uh, I'm referring to is a zero to 10 count. You know, you know what a 10 is for you where you're just dysfunctional. You're, you're out of your mind. You're crawling out of your skin versus a one where you're at peace. So even having more of a recognition given it during the day, where's my number now? We'll talk a little later about how to bring that number down, cool. but just, just recognizing that I, I have a level of anxiety, but if I don't, if I'm, if I don't have an awareness of it, it's mm-hmm. going to affect everything else I'm doing. That, that's huge. Yeah. That, that is super huge. Hey, um, Steve Gibbs has a question here before we go to a break. He says he understands childhood abuse issues but what else is childhood trauma? Would you have a... a oh, yeah. Um, you know, we usually think of the term abuse. In, in, in The general term we think of, it, it's what's, what's called invasive abuse. Things that are done to us. You know, and those are the first thing that comes to mind. But actually in counseling, in addiction recovery, I found that the, the most prominent abuse is the abuse of abandonment. So it doesn't get as much advertising but right. it actually makes me anxious. If I have a, well, I'm a good example, I have abandonment issues from my childhood. Later on in my marriage, when I experienced times when I thought my wife was stepping away or whether she was frustrated with me or taking a drive, it would instigate some of those old thoughts that I had that were related to my abandonment. Hmm. So I was, I was anxious during a conversation as to whether she was going to leave. I give that as one example. But yeah. there's a lot more there that when it's uncovered, you at least can recognize it and not react to it in the same way. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's really interesting because I, I uh, for when I was a young kid, I was always felt like my parents were going to leave. I, I, I was fearful of them dying or just coming home from school one day and they weren't, weren't going to be there. And uh, I'd play sick all the time just so I could be home and try to control that. 
Um, and then with my son, Kyle, and with some of his anxiety being adopted, our his psychologist said that no matter how good you love him, he's going to deal with abandonment issues and that will feed his anxiety and things like that. So this, this is really, if it's just for me, this is really helpful. <laughs> um, so I appreciate that, Rob. Um, there's another question here uh, and we'll, we'll, I just want to get to it because I, uh, I think we're on a good flow. Um, Bob Santos says, can you say something about cell phone use in the screens and screens in general? Does that, am I saying that right, Bob? Does that lead to anxiety or are you cracking a joke? No, I'm. Uh, I know if they talk about young children, how um, oh yeah, they get a lot of screen time. It affects them. Um, you know, like with ADHD and things like that. How do you think this relate? That relates to uh, anxiety in general, Rob. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk in a little bit about creating a really a lifestyle that's complementary to uh, lowering your anxiety. I've got some resources I'll, I'm going to put up later on that talk about we, we have to really have a balanced approach to a work and rest mentality. And, and Bob, you've actually written some really good, good books on this, but we have to have that Sabbath mentality, you know, in the, in the weekly framework, but in the daily framework, we have to learn to shut down and balance that constant in uh, the, the constant uh, flow of information in and out computers, phones, things like that. The brain cannot rest if it's being constantly stimulated. You know, we love the production, but then we can't turn it off. So yeah. we have to find the balance that works for us individually. And we have to respect it because as created beings, I, I only ha I have limitations as to what I can, what I can constantly press and accomplish before I have to pay the piper. So anxiety yeah. is how it shows up. That's the price you pay. Yeah. That's really good, Rob. Appreciate that. Um, we're going to take just a little uh, infomercial break here. Uh, Debbie's going to come on and share some things that are coming up that you might be interested in. Uh, we hope that you find these huddles helpful and encouraging. That's our, um, our desire here at uh, USM, and I know it's Pastor Chris's desire. Uh, wave to us, Pastor Chris. He joined us um, live over there, and um, so I uh, just appreciate him being here. But um, uh, I'll just turn it over to Debbie. And once we come back, uh, I know uh, Rob's going to be talking about what are some of the side effects of uh, living in, in an anxious state. And I think that'll be really interested. So Debbie, take it away. Hey, everyone. Elam Fellowship has two huddles coming up that we'd love for you all to be a part of. This coming Monday at 11 a.m., we're partnering with Redwoods Leadership Group to host a session on financial certainty during uncertain times. John Schiffert will share some steps on finding financial peace during our season of crisis. And then on Thursday, April 16th at 8 p.m., we're hosting a session for youth and kids leaders. Eric Peoples will be sharing an encouraging word, and then we'll follow up with a time of Q&A. If you're looking for some encouragement and connection, we'd love for you to join. Cool. Thanks, Debbie. Um, to register for those just do the, what you've done to get onto this one. Go to our website, uh, click on huddles and um, register and we'll be sure to get you the link. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Mark Scorsone. I am uh, Assistant USM Director under Joe Jansen um, and Joe's desire is to put on a lot of these huddles, especially in this day and age when we're just a uh, day and age where we're just stuck home and um, I really want to connect. So I hope you find these helpful and encouraging. Um, Joe, do you want to just say a quick hi before we get back in? Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's great to see everybody. Um, I love what I love what Rob's talking about. Um, also, I, I want to mention too that if you if you know people, uh, we have coaching at Elon Fellowship, and we're doing a bunch of free four free sessions of coaching during this crisis time. We're not counselors, but we can help people process anxiety, grief, loss. Uh, if we if we think it's above our pay grade, with uh, we would re we would uh, you know tell you you probably need a professional counselor. But just having somebody to talk to and process through things, especially for pastors and ministry leaders, uh, I really you know the coaches are available. They're trained. They're certified with the Elon Fellowship, and we would love to be able to make. Uh, they're kind of like thinking partners, planning partners. Um, so I just, I want you to know that we're offering the free four sessions 
uh, during this crisis time. But let's get back to Rob because I know he's got lots of great things to talk to us about. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Joe. So Rob, uh, jump right back in on some of the side effects of living in an anxious state and I'm uh, thrilled to get into this. Go for it. All right, uh, Joe, I appreciate that comment you made too about the coaching. Uh, if I don't share later on, isolation is one of the worst things that we can do uh, during a time of anxiety, heightened anxiety. The, the sharing and connecting with people is how we were designed and it literally helps to lower that. So that's, that's good advice. Um, let me just pull up on the screen here, if I can master this. Debbie's pretty good at that. She, sl she flipped right over to it. Um, here's some of the ways that if we leave it unchecked. Now, I, I think all of us know people who have just been anxious ever since we've known them. For some people, it's almost like not only a way of life, it almost is like a banner they wear, you know, that they're anxious about everything. Uh, it's almost, almost like a prideful, like I worry about everything. Um, I just want you to realize it does come with consequences. Uh, here's some of the areas. Mentally, it, it can hijack our thinking, and it just kind of can take us over in, into a repetitive, uh, worst-case scenario kind of thinking. And, and I'm sure some of you have tried to minister to people who have gotten caught in that loop and you have trouble pulling them out. Emotionally, what's happening, it's literally releasing chemicals that are ramping up their fight or flight. That's why you can't stand in front of a train and try to stop it. You know, you think that thinking will change it, but once that begins to ramp up, you got to bring in some different tools. Because <clears throat> telling somebody to stop worrying so much doesn't seem to help much. And it, I'm sure all of us have been in that situation. Uh, it can be phys physically exhausting. You know, the release of cortisol and adrenaline and the ups and the exhaustion. Uh, it's, it's a sad way to live. And there's a lot of people who, who unfortunately are living this way. Uh, last two pieces, relationally. When, you, when we're anxious, and I, I've been married 30 plus years, so I can attest to this. It decreases my patience. I can't be at the same time patient and full of the spirit of patience. At the same time, I'm full of anxiety. And I generally will tend to take that out on the people closest to me. Um, lastly, the spiritually, it's hard to feel connected to God. At the same time, you're experiencing high levels of anxiety. And, and just to speak to this point about the spirituality, um, I've been a Christian for a little over 20 years, so most of my teaching has come in my adult life. And one of the things I heard expressed early on was that it was a product of your faith, that, that, your, lack, that your anxiety uh, was a product of your lack of faith. And many of you maybe have heard this, maybe it was taught to you. Um, my response to that is, tell me what you do with Jesus in the garden because he physically was sweating blood, according to Luke's testimony. Um, he certainly did not lack faith, but he also reached out to the people around him who, he, who fell short of the one thing he asked. Um, he felt alone. And I think that was a, a major contributor to his anxiety, which goes back to, to Joe's point about connecting with other people. So, Anytime someone tries to sell you or put that on you, uh, Jesus experienced anxiety. I don't know what else you call it. I don't believe he lacked faith. So there's obviously other factors that come into it. Um, if you guys don't have anywhere you're going to jump to, let, let's break down two areas that I think are the the major pieces to look for when we're trying to deal with anxiety. One is our thinking. There is no doubt that our thinking can, can contribute to our level of anxiety. The scripture says, you know, as a man thinketh, so he goes. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we think of the circumstances we're in now. It is so easy to get into catastrophic thinking. You know, the stores don't have enough toilet paper. They don't have enough bread. We're not going to have enough food. So you go from the reality to the worst case scenario. And you literally can ramp yourself up into anxiety in a matter of moments. Right. 
doing nothing but using your thoughts. So what I'm, what I'm trying to encourage people to do, because um, someone asked, you know, don't I have to have, aren't I supposed to be prepared? In fact, my wife and I have had this conversation the last couple of weeks. The answer is, yeah, we're supposed to be prepared. God calls us to be prepared, not to be sluggards, right? I think there's a balance between being prepared versus spending too much time in speculation. Preparedness has a purpose and a plan. And it's thought out. It's not exaggerated. But when we get into the speculation of the what, what, what's the worst case, we, we find ourselves out of control of, of, to be able to influence our situation. And the more out of control we feel, the more anxiety is going to go up. So I think Matthew 6 gives us a good baseline. Focus on today. What can I do today to maintain peace and, and tranquility, but also be moved to action when God's calling me to? But it's not about worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow's trouble is sufficient for itself. Um, the second guideline on the thinking part, I really think that Philippians 4, it, I call it kind of a roadmap to peace. It, it's a beautiful picture of, you know, he says, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice, the Lord is at hand. You know, it's first to remember that God is here. He is in this. Uh, the world has not tilted off kilter that God is no longer in control. Uh, you've had times in your life when, when you thought things were out of control, but the, the truth is you later came to see that there was a purpose and, and there, God was in it. So what Philippians does, and, and most, I'm, I know I'm speaking to people who are familiar with this passage, think of it also as something that you can help to offer to somebody else. The, the process in Philippians 4 is that we bring all things to God through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So we cry out to God with, with, our, with our innermost fears. We're honest with him the way David was, was honest with him in the Psalms. So we practice in our private time to correct our thinking. We practice being emotionally honest with God in our expressing. But then we also ask him for what we need. After we have done that, we've exhausted our many needs. Then we begin to give thanks, and it reminds us of his goodness, and he's here. When we transition from fear to trust, even in that one verse, we transition from a fearfulness to I'm going to trust him because he's trustworthy. When I can rest in that and begin to sit in it mentally, the peace of God, which doesn't make any sense because nothing's changed, but it will guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So I, I literally think it's a, it's a practical roadmap. And then he goes on to talk about meditate on what is good and noble and just and pure. Uh, meditate on these things. So I think these need to be part of our quiet time. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great roadmap. Um, I remember when I was... Uh, um, going to a counselor and they were, I think the phrase they gave me was stinking thinking, uh, yeah. that I would focus on that, uh, and wrap my world all around that wrong uh, thinking and put you down a path that you definitely don't want to go down to. So, um, um, started memorizing some scriptures and, and just to combat some of the, uh, the fear and, uh, and we have fear all around us now. I mean, you just turn on yeah. the news and, and with the virus and things, it's, uh, I felt like, uh, just for me personally, when I was out trying to get toilet paper um, several times, uh, I felt like the Lord was saying, be, be the peace. You know, if, if someone is cutting in front of you, just smile and say, go for it. Just don't be stressing out like a lot of other people. And it's just amazing what a, even a smile will do to somebody in that situation. Um, yeah. If we can just carry that peace, it's a, it's a world of difference. It kind of takes the focus off yourself and, and the fear and anxiety that you're feeling and release and peace to other people. I know it's, um, it's just a little thing, but I know it can be felt. So, uh, it, it, Rob, is there any other things besides our thoughts that can cause, uh, anxiety? Uh, yeah, uh, Mark, I related, uh, some, some, somewhat related to what Bob said, our environment is a huge contributing factor in, yeah. in our level of anxiety. Um, 
I, I think of our bodies, uh, or, or think of our soul like a like a solar panel. It, it it's it especially for those of us who are more sensitive. If we have a a supine temperament or or really a personality that is sensitive, we're going to absorb the atmosphere. Right. We we can't really control that. We can we can help to regulate it and try not to completely dive into it, but the the sensitive people today that are built to minister are also some of the sensitive people that are being overwhelmed today. So so the enemy is using that gift to overwhelm us. So environment's pretty important. Um, I, I suggest to people on a very practical level, you know, turn the news off mm-hmm. when you need to. You know, get your updates, stay informed. But I remember after 9-11, a lot of people were suffering from that information fatigue. You know, for several days, it was just constant negative. Um, I do feel like we're beginning to, uh, maybe not heavily in the New York area, I understand, but in some parts of the country, we're beginning to, to feel a, maybe the beginning of a, of a, of a relief of that in some, in some cases. So that's going to happen down the road. But for right now, we might need to personally limit how much we expose ourselves because yeah. it's just not healthy. Um, let, me share, let me share a couple other thoughts here on that. Can I ask a question? I think I have a screen. Yeah, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I don't, want to, I don't want to stop this. Go ahead. I'm fine. Um, these are some things on your screen, which some of you may be already doing, um, but they might be helpful for some other people to hear. Uh, we're built for routine and structure. And one thing is for sure, everybody's routine and structure has been thrown off. So once you start to come up from that, try to create a structure within your day that you're, that you're trying to do some similar things at similar times of the day. For whatever time you were doing work previously, build that in with something that's intentional. It doesn't have to be work, but but that rhythm of work and rest and exercise and spending time with the Lord. The next thing I have on here is create timeouts with God. You have an amazing opportunity to hit a reset button Mm -hmm. and some of the things you've wanted to do, some of the good habits you've wanted to build. People are are literally, that's like our routines have been wiped out from us temporarily. You get a chance to build in some new disciplines that could potentially become permanent disciplines. Um, get out for walks and drives. Uh, if any of you are, I'm, I'm, I have a melancholy temperament, so I, I'm okay by myself, but even I got to get out. You know, I got to get out and even driving around town or if I can't interact with people, at least change of environment. Um, staying in the same office in, all the time, it's, it's, it's going to get debilitating. And by the way, if, if I don't remember it later, anxiety and depressions are very close cousins. Mm-hmm. You know, many of the components, the symptoms of one, they're, they're comorbid, they, they, they share with the other. So the better we can do here, the more we can stay off potential depression during this time. Good. Um, plan ahead, work together to build strategies for your homes. And I joke on here, you know, I have my wife make sure I have wipes with me everywhere I go. I got my little Clorox box, you know, when I go in the store. But the point is you just build some new routines to build some safety. You leave, maybe leave your shoes out, outside the, the door you, or what, you wash your clothes when you come in. There's some practical things that can just lower the anxiety. And even if it's not something you're anxious about, if it's something your partner is anxious about, if you don't honor it, you're just going to create anxiousness for yourself, right? So you, you, you work together as a team. Um, music. Uh, funny, silly times with kids and spouse. Uh, I joked on an earlier on a broadcast with the church. I was like, when's the last time you danced with your wife in the kitchen? You know, sometimes you just need to do something that's just relaxing and just gets back to some personal comfort. Um, I, we talked about with Bob's comment about use technology to stay connected. Um, but don't, don't make it, don't transfer it to be your only connection. Right. Uh, and finally, you know, for those of us, you know, in the fellowship, many of us engage in spiritual language. And I think the use of that language is, is phenomenal in this time. 
Uh, we could just personally worship and, and worship in our spiritual language, pray for each other in spiritual language. It has a, it literally has a brain altering uh, effect on bringing the peace of God. Awesome. These are some things. Yeah. These are some really, really good things. I know when school got shut down and we were all in lockdown here, um, we, we were just scrambling to try to uh, make sense of everything. And so my wife came up with a really a structured routine for our boys because now we're full-time homeschool teachers and she's working, she's a, a special ed teacher for fourth and fifth grade and I'm working from home. So we're actually working harder than ever uh, before with uh, different things. So we you know, keep together this hour by hour routine that actually has been a godsend and our kids are actually responding to it, go figure. Um, you know, we're putting worship music on. So some of these things that you're laying out, Rob, are just uh, really uh, great, great things. I would love to hear uh, what are some of your routines out there, folks, um, that you had to change yeah. or adjust or found helpful during this time? Uh, anybody got a, a thought that uh, you'd like to share with the group that might be helpful for everybody? My routine, oh. is, uh, my routine is I turn on Zoom in the morning, put on these <laughs> earphones, and I go, I have meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, and I have then a splitting migraine headache at the end of the day. So that's my, uh, no anxiety, just uh, one, no, it's amazing how much Zoom is going on. Did, did yeah. we mention that balance word in there earlier, Joe? I don't know if we mentioned that, but talk to my boss though. He's the one calling me <laughs> meetings here. It's like uh, yeah, it's gotten so serious for Joe that he's brought his chair from the office into his home there. So. I've got my I got my I have my my monitor here. You should see what I got here from the office. It's uh <laughs> you get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh I think having a routine though is hard it's it is more difficult because we can't do anything where you know, like you said, you go for a drive. Like we are, Joanne and I are trying to uh, develop some new routines. We used to have the the kids over a lot, and you're not supposed to have grandkids over. My one, my daughter's second door, but yeah, it is, and it does help to have those uh, those yeah. routines down because it helps. You know, just I think it's comforting when you're doing certain certain things over and over again. Like I like to have a morning routine and an evening routine to kind of gear the day up and gear the get gear my day down those things are helpful cool pastor chris did you uh, wave your hand or were you just trying to get joe's attention <laughs> you're muted you're muted sir you did it again you muted yourself you unmuted and unmuted you someone go. please help our president <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. hey um i'm uh i'm the boss that joe just uh referred to but anyway uh, we're all, uh, uh, I, I think like, um, at least at Elam Fellowship, it, it just seems like, at least for me, uh, like I had just gotten into a place in my life where I was taking my day off and, uh, and really having a day off. And then, uh, when this hit, we have been in charge mode, like on overdrive. And, uh, I do have an end to my day, but a lot of times, uh, you know, stuff's happening. And another thing I would, I want to say, and maybe Rob, you could, uh, by the way, Rob, doing a great job. Uh, this, this is really, really good stuff. But um, I just, uh, I just would say that um, there seems to be a, a, an increased um, level of, um, of, of, of pressure and everything is, everything seems to be like on the Richter scale of, of neg uh, potentially negative. Mm -hmm. So um, intense as all get out. It, it, it's just, I, I said, I almost said, uh, I, I can't use the word I said, it began with a P, but it's like, who am I going to tick off today? Uh, it's like every day uh, there's some conversation that decisions we're making is, is, is potentially negative or received negatively. Sure. Emotions are all in height, and I have to I have to do self talk to bring myself down. Some of the stuff I learned since my heart attack, yeah. uh, to, just to calm myself down and say, okay, look, uh, uh, you know, I just spoke on a uh, uh, on the whole idea of a non anxious presence, and in a sermon I just put out, and and I'm having to do that. I'm having to you know cast my cares on the Lord, and I'm having to pray with you know and that kind of stuff, but. 
almost yeah. every day, every day there's something. It's like in, in, even in the office or out there, it's like somebody's frustrated with something. And that seems to be an increased pressure that I'm experiencing. But routine wise, uh, let me tell you what I've been doing. Uh, I, I kind of asked a question there, but now I'll answer the question that was asked. And that is, I, uh, I go for rides. I get in my car. There's nobody going to infect me in my car. My car is pretty wiped down. And I'll get in my car and just go for rides. I've always done that yeah. anyway. So I'm still doing that. And then Carol and I have done some of that. We, uh, we've literally gone for rides. And we actually met some people in a parking lot. And we're, uh, you know, we had enough social distancing to be able to communicate with them. For me... I mean, I just ran into Joe the other day in the hallway because I've been in my office upstairs and he's been in his home with his uh, uh, with all of Elam's equipment there. And uh, and uh, but basically, uh, Joe and I ran into each other and I didn't share this with him because I didn't want to get him too excited. But but for a moment, it was like, oh, there's a human being because you guys are so <laughs> human right now on the screen. You know what I mean? And it was just yeah. so cool for just a minute. To, to be, you know, six feet away from somebody. So I think, you know, just to have that moment of, of a real life person within a distance besides my wife, Carol, uh, who, you know, obviously I'm sure she, she's glad that I get out and she's uh, listening, but that she get, you know, she's probably glad. Yeah, yeah. excuse me. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fight, Carol, because we got a counselor here. We could uh, let them uh, help us right here. Yeah, all of us could watch. Yeah, <laughs> and listen. <laughs> you know, Chris, there's something you're, you you said though. I, I want to tap into that, that. Almost everybody here, in some level, uh, is a person of influence within their communities. No matter whether it's their family, their ministry, their friends, and and this idea that you know we the people who have picked up that mantle responsibility. We, we can also tend to carry it in such a way that it burdens us, yeah. not intentionally. So if, if we don't create intentional time throughout the day to quiet ourselves and hear from the Lord, those other voices and the pressures, whether they're from inside or outside, they're overwhelming. And, and I speak from experience because, you know, I can forget when I'm trying to help all these folks. I can't help anyone unless I'm quiet and I hear, because when I'm anxious, Good. I always want to act. Yep. Yep. Anxiety always promotes act, act, action. And I can tell you for me, that's not always from the Lord. <laughs> so this is, this is, I'm trying to really become more secure in some of these habits. Um, and God has a way of doing that, right? He turns up the heat in things yep. and we either use our steam or his steam. And, and I, I have only learned it really from uh, repeated failure. You know, right. realizing how, how far it goes. So, yeah, hey, Rob, I love I, the drives. I love the drives too. Beth and I, we, we know every inch of the small town. We, we just get out every night and do it. So it's awesome. Yeah. Hey, could I just add one thing? We do have, uh, Joanne just put together, my wife uh, just put together a resource uh, on, on scheduling and building, building routines through the day. If, uh, if you're interested in that, we can get that out to you because uh, she literally just put that together. Uh, awesome. That's Good. great. That's uh, really, really helpful stuff. Um, I know that uh, Jasmine has a, had a, a comment here, work from home, trying to find the balance. Um, she says she can find that she works longer. Jasmine, you want to um, uh, go on that a little bit more? Um, yes. So one of my, my, the first weeks that we were going through all this is just finding a balance because we were finding out um, how to do online church with kids how to how to do online church with parents and families and so because i wasn't using i was using zoom to to train leaders but i wasn't using our facebook platform as much and i'm not um i'm not a social media person like i don't want to be on facebook a lot so just having to learn facebook having to find a balance with that um, and then i found myself like at 11 o'clock still working you know so it was just it's just crazy right. so just finding that balance i think now I've kind of learned a little bit more and I'm a part of uh, other social media sites that are kind of helping us with that. But it's just, it, it's frustrating because sometimes you can sit uh, on the sofa and just work, work, work and not think about yeah, it. Right. Doing yeah. that. That's why we got to have a partner in the journey. Yeah. We got to have a like-minded partner 
friend or spouse or whoever that just kind of keeps a check on us because we can we can be up two o'clock in the morning working on stuff. Right, right. I, I really I had, feel. I had, uh, let me, I had started out with my office. I set up an office in, in the bedroom, but it was crazy because I was rolling out of bed, you know, sitting at the chair. I said, Joanna, I said, I got it. This has to change. And she's making fun of me because I have had three different places in the house now where I put the office, but it's like, it's hard to you know, have a, a separation uh, of, you know, what home life and work life when you're working totally at home. It's, uh, you have to be very right. intentional about it. Yeah, it was, it was really awkward uh, to have Zoom meetings with Joe knowing he didn't have pants on. It just <laughs> caused his anxiety. Um, but uh, Rob, I think um, these new routines, I think they're just kind of resetting our, our whole life. I think once we get off of um, the viruses go and we get back to normal, whatever that is, I think the Lord is really helping us or allowing us to reset some of these things in our life that you were talking about, cut out time with God, you know, uh, take a drive. I mean, this stuff shouldn't stop after we get back to normal, whatever that is. So I just uh, appreciate uh, some of the stuff um, uh, that you're sharing there. Does anybody else have any routines uh, before we go to get into some of the resources that Bob, that Rob has for us? Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, my husband and I are both working from home and we live in a 750 square foot apartment in our son's house with two grandchildren. <laughs> so it's a busy place, but we've been able to carve out uh, the work time we need. But one of the things my husband and I have purposely done is twice a day, we go out for 15 minute walks. Oh. And uh, the walk later in the day, we tend to stretch out. I've got to get my 10,000 steps in every day. Um, and that's really helped to um, center us even partway through the day to take that break and hit the reset button and go outside, even if it's raining a little bit, um, really makes a big difference. The other thing um, that I've been finding is extremely helpful is doing a uh, a 10 or 15 minute session of contemplative or centering prayer. Hmm. And um, I think Martha Seidler was on this call. She and Rich Seidler, um, actually Alex Seidler's parents, um, they, they're really training people in this centering prayer technique. And I find it the most restful, peaceful 10 or 15 minutes I've ever experienced. And I come out of that all of the anxiety is drained away from me in that time period, completely gone. So those two things I found incredibly helpful, the walking and then the centering prayer. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Those are really good uh, tips that are helpful. Anybody else? We've got one more um, routine out there that someone's done that they find really helpful before we turn it back to Rob. No. Beth, what do you do to work with this guy, Rob, over here on your routines? Oh, we don't have enough time for that. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lot of work. Um, Rob, do you have some resources that you want to share with us? I, I, think she started to, I think she started to say something. I heard her in the other room, but I don't know if she oh, okay. heard it or not. I don't think Go I ahead, have the audio all the way on. Oh, you there know, you drive. go. You're on. Thanks, the drives and the walks. And something I've been, wanted to do for years but have just begun doing is just some journaling. Oh, wow. Yeah. Journaling to be able to, uh, so that Rob doesn't have to process all that stuff with me. The Lord, Rob, and, uh, you know, pen to paper has been helpful as well. Awesome. Thank you. That's Thank good. You. That's good. Go ahead, Rob. Um, you know, I want to also bounce off of what Kathy said. One of the things in the last couple of years that I've kind of added to the arsenal is this this idea of contemplative prayer, reflective prayer, uh, meditation, uh, things like that. Um, I want to share, see if I can get to my resource screen here. There we go. Now, the, these, are, these are three resources that, have really been impactful for me personally and for a lot of people. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not all new. Um, Sacred Rhythms uh, has been around for a while. It really talks about developing a rhythm for life. 
so that whatever your circumstances are, you can, the, these are studying the disciplines that Christ also, also modeled. Um, the, the one in the middle, the emotional the healthy spirituality is part of a series. Uh, in fact, our church has been doing it before, for our shutdown. This is the day by day, but it talks about the quiet with, without noise or interruption, two to three minutes of meditative contemplation before your devotion and then after. So it really helps you develop a rhythm uh, within a 15, 20 minute period. You can really get quiet and at peace before the Lord. And the, the last one, soul keeping, this is just a different concept to develop. And a lot of you, you preachers out there can, I'm sure you can run with this. The idea that my soul is the one part of me that it goes and spends eternity with heaven. And, and I have to find ways to nurture my soul, to bless my soul in ways that are healthy. Um, they're not self-medicative, but, but finding things that bless your soul that develops that inner peace so that you're more ready and energized for work. And this is kind of a lifelong journey for me. I, you know, I rediscovered a kayak and getting out of the water a couple of years ago because it was part of my youth. Um, that this book helped me to kind of take another look at myself. We're more than just a f working beings, you know, as, as productive as we want to be, especially as men, it's really about, um, it's about finding the balance of who we are and, and how we bless God by knowing what is a blessing to us as well. It, it may sound on the surface a little self-focused, but it's more about self-care that you can then, then be the best at what God's called you to be. Right. Um, two other, two other resources to help in the prayer and meditation side. Um, some of you may be familiar with the abide app, you know, it's become pretty popular. Uh, it, it's a free app. It also has a paid version, but it, it can actually assist you because for some people, this is a real struggle, how to slow down my mind long enough to really hear from the Lord and to contemplatively be with him. It, it's not something, you know, we're, we're told to do it from the pulpit. But, but most of us don't know how to do it. It's, right. You know, it's true. Um, and some of the most productive people for the Lord, bless their hearts, have the hardest time being quiet before the Lord. It's just, it's, it, the two don't go naturally hand in hand. The other thing on the right, um, this is not new information for most of you, but the number of Bible plans on anxiety alone in the version is in the hundreds. So just to get people to daily who, you know, struggle with anxiety or it's a part of their just kind of day to day, you can send them, if you guys aren't on the version, it's free as well, but you can send to people, you know, here's a study, I'll do it with you, you know, two to three day or seven day study. Hmm. And it really highlights biblically what God says about anxiety and how to deal with it. Cool. Some uh, great resources there. Rob, um, we're just gonna uh, we're gonna wrap up here in a couple minutes. Um, so, if you have any other questions, just either put it down in the, the comments. If you have a question, um, I know Debbie's got a couple other um, uh, infomercials here that we just want to make you aware of. And then once we get back from that, we'll get to any questions. And then just I know Rob has some scriptures he wants to share with us, and just have a, a closing time in prayer. So. Um, would love to have any of your questions there jotted down. So go ahead, Debbie. Hi again. Uh, every Friday at 11 a.m., Carol Ball is hosting a 15-minute prayer session through Facebook Live. You can watch and agree with her in prayer by heading to our Elam Fellowship Facebook page. Her con is coming up on Friday, April 17th. The conference has been pre-recorded, and there will be a live premiere on Facebook at 8 p.m. On the following day, Saturday the 18th, the HERCON staff will email the conference link to everyone on the HER Movement mailing list, and it will be available to all on EF's YouTube channel. To join the mailing list, visit elamfellowship.org slash multiply slash women. And finally, if you would like to be connected to Elam, grow in your ministry, and develop your giftings and calling, sign up to be a friend of Elam. And to learn more about this, visit elamfellowship.org slash join. Awesome. Thanks, Debbie. And that's uh, $14.99 a month to be a friend of Elam. Uh, you can sign up for that. But 
for today, two lucky winners can have three months free from what I'm told. We're going to offer that out. Uh, so we'll pick a couple winners um, to be friends of Elam. Uh, and you wouldn't have to pay anything for a couple months. Um, so yippee ki -yay. That's a lot of fun there. Um, I'm also uh, trying to get over here on the, the comment side here. Um, yeah, if you joined us for those prayer times, Carol did the first two, uh, and then our own president did today. Uh, just 15 uh, minutes where we're just praying for our country, praying for um, each other, praying for our leaders. And uh, if you haven't joined us, uh, try to check that out because it's really a fun time just to connect. Um, and then, uh, Bob, did you put a comment on there? Is that a, um, something with a routine you want to um, just uh, clue us in on a little bit? It's a book called The Common Rule. Oh, yeah. yeah. Habits of Purpose for an Age of Distraction. I'm finding it very good. Awesome. Nice. Nice. I want to. I just wanted to uh, give a, a plug in for that contemplative prayer. I don't know if I'm doing what other people do, but I have found uh, just even two minutes of just quiet, just quiet before the Lord. Because sometimes if you go into this stuff and you think you're going to have 30 minutes of contemplative, you know, meditation, right. uh, it doesn't work. But I've started out with a minute, two minutes, and it's amazing how just two minutes of just focused on Jesus and uh, breathing. Uh, it's just amazing how much it refreshes you. Um, so if you've never done some of that stuff, uh, try to find a, a method where you just do it for a minute or two uh, to get you started. And you'll find that you'll, you're, you'll really yearn for it because uh, mm -hmm. it really does clear out your brain as well as your spirit. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have a thought or a question uh, you want to gear towards Rob or and uh, before we turn it over to him? This has been uh, really, really helpful. Go ahead, raise your hand if you got one here, and I just want to make some time for it. Uh, if not, um, all right, Rob, you're doing a bang up job uh, with uh, with uh, no questions here. So um, I know you got some scriptures here. You want to just leave with us, and then uh, I'm just going to ask you to pray for everybody here, and um, and that we can manage our anxiety better. And I hopefully you guys found this encouraging and helpful. You never got to the meds. What if we need yeah, meds? I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to cover that real quick. <laughs> um, what, one quick thing to add on to what Joe said. If, if any of you have, not that he is in any way uh, attention deficit, but if any of you have attention deficit issues that your mind races and you're trying to do the contemplative prayer, Consider adding visualization to the prayer. Hmm. First begin to, to, to set, a, set the scene. And, and often for Christians, it's me and Jesus on the beach for me personally. But you begin to set the scene first, the smells, the sight, the sound. So you give your mind something to focus on. Then invite Jesus into the scenery. And, and in the process, your mind will, will slow down. It's, it, you got to give that ADD mind somewhere to focus. Um, a couple other real quick things. Uh, I asked Luke to put a, a link on here, uh, just maybe to answer some general questions about medication. Uh, some, some cases, medication is necessary. It, it, it quiet our minds. It, 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 it slows down the process enough that we can think through some of these healthy coping mechanisms. But if we're too overwhelmed, if the mind's not cooperating, it, it needs help medically at times to slow down the process. Um, and the last thing is, uh, if anxiety is a daily occurrence, if it's something that overwhelms you, he's also going to put a, a link up referring to grounding techniques. Uh, this is off of, a, off of a, a decent website that gives some good practical ideas. Grounding techniques are learning things that can help my body lower its anxiety number. It could be as simple as washing hands in warm water. Um, it could be exercising, but it, it, there's about, I think about 30 of them on the link. And whatever works for you is what works for you. These are healthy coping mechanisms that just tell the body to calm down that has nothing to do with what the mind's doing. So I just want to throw those in. Um, last thing, if you're considering counseling for this uh, area of, of, of need, consider EMDR therapy. It's excellent at helping you create grounding techniques. It's good for anxiety. 
It also will cover any prior issues related to uh, trauma, EMDR. And I do not have a link for it, but you can find a lot of information. And I think that's kind of, I'm going to also just kind of monitor this chat. If anybody has questions that come up after we're done, I'll be glad to answer them. Awesome. I was, uh, I've got a couple quotes here that I, I just kind of keep and read every once in a while when it feels like uh, losing control on some things. It says, don't let your mind bully your body into believing it must carry the burdens of all, all of its worries. And then another one, um, anxiety is a thin stream of fear trickling through our minds. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all of our other thoughts are drained. So it's um, a powerful thing there, but um, some of the things that we've learned today and to help manage our, our anxiety, I think are, are, have been really helpful. Thank you so much. And scripture, we can bombard them all day um, with anxious thoughts, be not anxious for anything. Um, in prayer and supplication, give it all to God. Cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Um, any other thoughts or questions? Um, that you gotta ask Rob before uh, we leave here today. Good, good stuff. Uh, yeah, I just really want to thank you for coming on. I know you're super busy doing uh, your counseling sessions throughout the the week on Zoom there, and um, I know you got a, a lot going with your time there. But I appreciate it. Uh, can everybody just give a golf clap uh, to Rob for just helping, <laughs> uh, just sharing his heart with us? Or, jazz hands or whatever you want to call it, but just just um, appreciate that. Uh, um, Luke, we'll, I know we didn't get on Facebook. We had some technical errors with that, uh, but will this still be recorded in our Zoom thing to be uh, released on our YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah you can, um, it'll probably be up in um, maybe uh, Monday. You'll be able to see it. And, uh, we can see if we can get this on our Facebook as well. Yeah, you can just go to YouTube and Google Elon Fellowship and subscribe, and you can get all of our huddles on that as well. Um, there's some really good things on there. Um, and we also have our last huddle coming up with um, uh, Gary Ingram uh, on the 21st uh, of this month. Uh, he's been doing two other, two other huddles on sexuality in the church, uh, so uh, feel free to join us with that. Rob, will you pray for us? as we close. And uh, again, you're going to stick around afterwards if anybody has any questions. Sure thing. Uh, Father God, I just thank you for this fellowship and this family <clears throat> of like-minded people, Lord, that you have brought us together for such a time as this. Lord, help us to not be overwhelmed by the burdens of the world, for they are yours. But teach us to minister to our homes, to our children, to our family, to the loved ones around us, the people you have given us to love. Uh, Lord, and let us remember our, our fallen brothers and sisters, even in New York and other places, Lord. We thank you for their testimony of faithful service. We thank you for the love that even in their passing on to you, uh, they will be remembered and they, their, their memory will be used to fortify the cause. So Lord, I, I thank you that, that uh, you take the rubble and you build up something new. And we look forward to the good work that you will do through this time in both our hearts, but also in this world. Yes. And Father, we love you. We thank you today for that sacrifice you made is like no other. It changed the earth. It changed our lives. So let us see your death as a resurrection and a newness that we have hope. Mm -hmm. And let us be that hope to other people, uh, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.